do it. Come on. Hey. Yeah. Thank God for Jesus. How many of you know something good is about to happen in your life? How many people know your best days are ahead of you? I can't tell you. Sound like Presbyterian. I say, who know your best days are ahead of you? Who knows that what the enemy meant for bad, God's about to turn it for your good.
God's going to save your children. God's going to pay off all your debts. There will be no sickness among you. You will never have cancer. And you will not die before your time. Now if you believe it, shout like you know something. I don't know you. I've never had a conversation with you. How do you know their name? I don't know. I don't know. It's the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of Truth know all your business. There is nothing you can hide from God. The Bible declares that the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the what? Good and the evil. Slap your name and say, God saw what you did last night. <laughs> there is nothing that we can hide from God. Because he's everywhere. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at one time. And even if he wasn't omnipresent, he's omniscient. I mean, not only is he everywhere at one time, but he knows everything. Not only is he omniscient, he's omnipotent. Not only that even if he don't know, or if he did know everything, or if he wasn't everywhere, he has the power to know everything. So either way, God is in control of everything. Nothing happens, nothing slips by God, nothing happens in your life by accident, by happenstance, by coincidence. Nothing that ever occurred in your life snuck up on God. Everything you went through, God knew you were going to go through it before you went through it, and he knew you was going to make it. God knew that no matter what trial you went through, you was going to stick with God. Amen. We see that in Job, the first chapter, that God, the devil, here comes God, God asks the devil a question, where you come from? The devil says, I've been going to and on the earth looking for somebody. I want to mess with somebody. God said, look at God. God put Job out there. He said, Have you considered Job? He said, yeah, I tried him, but you got a hedge around him. You got to understand, your life is protected. Colossians 3 and 1. You are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. God has protected you from everything. So if anything ever occurs in your life, know that it did not happen without heaven's permission. Oh, that's good, man. And if God allowed me to go through it, it's because God has confidence in me oh, yeah. knowing that no matter what he or she goes through, they're going to continue to give me the glory. Oh, yeah. Job said it like this in the 13th chapter, verse 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. David said in the 34th song, I will bless the Lord at oh, Come on, that means when you're broke. Oh, that means when you're back up against the wall, you don't know what's going on. You go to some kind of way, find a shout in there. A couple of days ago, I was not well. And I wasn't feeling good. Just a sickness came on me just for about 24 hours. I don't let sickness come on me for long. I kick it off. And so I wasn't feeling good and I was hurting. Praise God. And everybody was trying to give me medicine. I don't want no medicine. They said, you need to go to the doctor. I said, I ain't going to take you to the doctor when I know the great physician. Praise God. Praise God. And uh. And I was in that bed, and while I was in the bed, wasn't feeling, I mean, literally pain all over my body. I, I, I don't know the word. But while I was in the bed in pain, I was in that bed saying, God, I praise you. God, I give you glory. God, I give you honor. Why? Because the 22nd Psalm declares that if you want to know where God lives, his address is P.O. Box Praise. And if you praise him, he's going to show up where you're at. And when he shows up, healing comes with him. Y'all not talking to me. I give you 10 seconds to open your mouth and release a praise in here. Come on, hallelujah. Glory to God. And if you praise him, 
He's gonna come to your house. Who want God to come to your house? Who want him to come to your neighborhood? Come down your street. Come to your front door. Amen. But God knows everything. Amen. Amen. And so the Spirit of the Lord told me to uh, do something tonight. And I really want you to get this. Go to Proverbs chapter 13. Get your Bible. Get it. Get it. Get your Bible. Proverbs chapter 13. How many people here believe God wants you to be blessed? Amen. Come on, wrong name. I don't know who that is. That person next to you must not want to be blessed. I said, how many of you here believe God wants you to be blessed? Yeah. I, I, and when I'm talking about blessed, I'm talking about, I'm talking about blessed for real. I'm talking about increase. I'm, I'm not talking about enough. I'm talking about more than enough. I'm not talking about much. I'm talking about too much. Somebody shout overflow. You're not doing it right. You're making me mad. You're not doing it right. Say overflow. Say too much. Say more than enough. Come into my house. Try it again. Say more than enough. Too much. Overflow. Come into my house. When is it coming? When is it coming? When is it coming? Yell your address out in the atmosphere so I know where to come to. Come on, call your address out. Call your bank out so they know where to put the deposit. Praise God. He takes the foolish thing to confound the wise. It's crazy things like this that if you obey them and honor them, God will bless you. Isaiah 119 declares, if you be willing and what? Obedient, you shall eat the what? The good of the land. Obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. If you learn to obey, to follow a simple instruction, John chapter 2, Mary said, whatever he tells you to do, what? Do it. What was the instruction? Fill the water pots. Fill them with what? Water. Why am I going to fill them with water? We want wine. She didn't question it. They didn't question it. Whenever God gives you an instruction, you don't question it, you obey it. Because God cannot be understood, he can only be revealed. Some of you try to understand God. You can't understand God. God's ways, Isaiah 55, are not your ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. The ways of the world are the more money you want, the more money you need to save. God's ways are the more money you want to receive, the more money you got to what? Give. The world's way is if you want to make it, you got to climb the ladder of success and walk up that ladder. God's ways is the way up is the way down. Everything with God is the opposite. The world says if somebody hurt you, hurt them back. God said if somebody curse you, bless them. Somebody hate you, do good to them. Somebody use you, pray for them. That ain't easy. Am I right? God says always do the opposite. He said if somebody hit you on one cheek. Now, what does that mean? That that doesn't, you you have to understand, that doesn't literally mean if somebody hit you in the right cheek, tell them, hey, hit me in the left cheek. No. What that means is do the opposite. What does that mean? If they do you evil, offer them good. (laughs) That's conduct. Am I making sense? Don't sit up there and let nobody keep hitting you. Am I making sense? Everything with God is the opposite of what you've been taught, what you think. And some of us don't understand that Romans 12 and 2, be not conformed to this world, but be you what? By the renewing of your mind. And it's simple things like a woman who in in, in, in the 17th chapter, who's getting ready to eat her food and die. Her and her son, they gonna eat their food and die. And the preacher comes to town yeah. and say, "Hey, I know you plan on eating you and your son. Forget y'all. Feed me first. If that would have happened in the twenty-first century, it would have made headline news. Preacher robs widow of her last meal." 
That would have been on Larry King. That would have been Larry King. Had she seen it as her last, it would have been her last. But she obeyed the prophet because she discerned he's a man of God. Amen. And if I do die, he got the power to raise me back up. So she followed that instruction. And look at what happened. Not only did God bless her, but her meal never ran dry. Because she followed one simple instruction. Yes. Whenever God wants to do something new in your life, can I, can I, I feel good, y'all. Yes. Whenever God wants to bless you, or whenever God wants to do something from the body of Christ, yes. he, he, you would think that God would look for the rich people to sustain the man of God. Amen. But God always looked for the poor to sustain because if they sustain when they sow into the kingdom, it changes their present status. Oh, you got to help them. If you let the poor remain poor and don't challenge them to let go of what they have, they'll remain poor. God doesn't want you to be poor. God wants you to live in the best, drive the best, wear the best. God wants you to be so blessed that your unsaved family wants your God because of the way they see you living. Come on, y'all. Your, your sinner family ought to say, my God, something about the way you live ought to provoke them to jealousy. And say, my God, if he'll take care of you like that, I want to try Jesus. Say amen. Say amen. Now slap somebody and say, God's getting ready to increase me. Who believes that? I told you when I say something, you're supposed to say what? God's getting ready to increase you. Mm, yeah. You believe that? I'm telling you, this is a season where, well, I told you the other day, things are getting ready to get bad in America. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. And there will be no safety. There will be no protection in your banks. No protection in your 401k plan. No protection in your social security. Because the government is not your source. Right. Amen. Amen. If the government start giving you money today, you got to know that your God shall supply. Tell somebody, I'll always be taken care of. Come on. Amen. You're not going to lose your house. You're not going to lose your car. And you're not going to lose your mind. Because he'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on it. Say amen. So I want you to get that. Because you can break the back of poverty. Amen. If you learn how to obey God, Amen. at any given moment, my God, I feel the anointing coming on me. At any given moment, if you follow an instruction, it'll change your life. I was in uh, I was in Washington D.C. Walked up to a woman in the middle of the service. I say, "Ma'am," I say, "Who Bridget?" She say, "I'm Bridget." I say, give me a hundred dollars. She say, why? <laughs> I say, God want to give you a hundred grand. She say, when? <laughs> you can't blame her for wanting to know when. <laughs> I say, tomorrow. <laughs> she came in there, sowed that seed, came back in, shot it all over the church. I said, what you shot it for? She said, I want you to know today when I went to work, I got a check, so I got an affidavit, whatever, I got to go pick it up. $113,000. Shout hey. Come on, come on, come on. Hey. Hey. I was in Fort Pierce, Florida, in the middle of a service. Walked up to a woman and said, ma'am. She said, what? I said, God told me to tell you, empty your bank account. Except for $10. She said, you sure the Lord said that? <laughs> I said, yeah. She said, well, he told you that, but he didn't tell me that. <laughs> I 
I said if what you want, if what you have is the most you want, keep it. But if it's the least you want, God said give it because in seven days He's gonna make you a million. She said, "You sure?" He said, "Yeah." Thirty minutes later, it took a long time. Thirty minutes later, she wrote a check, sat at my feet. I said, "Here's my number. Call me when you get the money." That was a Sunday night, four p.m. Well. Monday night, she said, "I don't have it." Tuesday night, she said, "I don't have it." Wednesday night, she called me. She said, "I don't have it." I said, "Ma'am, I said in seven days." <laughs> Thursday night, she don't have it. Friday night, I'm nervous. <laughs> she still don't have it. In the spirit, you know God said something when you get in the flesh. Sure. Sure. Sometimes you begin to question. Saturday, she called me that morning and say, you are far from it. Yes, I am. She said, yeah. I said, why you figure? She said, I ain't got no money. She said, what to do? I said, I have no idea. <laughs> I didn't know what to tell me. She said, I'm going to get my last $10 out the bank. I said, God be with you. I said, I'm going to pray. I got on my knees to pray, and the peace of God came over me. So I got on my knees, got ready to pray. She called me back about 10 minutes, maybe 15, 20 minutes late. She said, prophet. I said, what? I said, I thought I was a false prophet. She said, no, you're a prophet now. <laughs> I said, why did you say that? She said, I went to get my last $10 out of the bank. She said, and when I got back my bank statement, it said I had $1,010,000 in my account. Wait, she said, what to do? I said, get as much of it out as you can right now because ain't no guarantee it's going to be there tomorrow. Praise God. Somebody say, hallelujah. hallelujah. It's your obedience. Praise God. That releases your miracle. Are y'all hearing me? And some of us miss it because we try to understand God. And faith does not operate with your five senses. No. If you can touch it, it ain't faith. Praise God. If you can see it, it ain't faith. Come on, come on. If you can smell it, it ain't faith. Are you, am I making sense? Yeah. You, you got to know without a shadow of a doubt in your spirit, man, that if God said it, he's going to do it. I got ready to put together a conference in Mississippi. It's true story. I had a conference in Mississippi that the Lord told me to do. And I told the Lord, if you want me to put it on, it's your job to pay for it. So whenever I get a bill, see, I belong to God. Y'all got to catch this. First Corinthians 6 says, you have been bought with a price. If God bought you, it's his responsibility to take care of what he bought. Lay your hands on yourself and say, I belong to God. I belong to God. Come on, you sound like a Mormon. Try it again. Say, I belong to God. I belong to God. You sound like Methodist. Try again. Say, I belong to God. I belong to God. If I belong to him, it's his job to take care of me. So whenever I get a bill in the mail, I go, doo -doo -doo, you got mail. You know like AOL. <laughs> I tell that to God. When I get a when I get a beat in me, I go in prayer, get on my knees, say, Lord, I love you. So talk to him a good hour. Then I go, doo -doo -doo, and I give him all my bills. Say, it's your bills. Because it's his job to take care Amen. of what he purchased. The Lord told me to do that conference. And I said, Lord, I'll do it. I'm going to put it together. And I'm going to do it. And the conference was expensive. And the Lord told me, he said, there's two ministries. I want you to sow two seeds into the ministry. But Lord know whatever he tell me to do, I do it. I won't fight. I won't go back and forth. He tell me to do something. I do it. I let it go. I sowed them seeds. And God had one man, I mean young man, 30-something years old, who 
who, who, who looked real homely, you understand? I mean, you didn't, you wouldn't think you had nothing, you know? Would call me one day and say, lady call me, say, my husband trying to reach you. I said, for real? He said, yeah. He said, he won't give you some money. I said, well, please tell him, call me immediately. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. But I honor God and sowed that seed that God told me to sow. And in one week, God made one man sow a seed into the ministry of $875,000. That is God. Hey. hey. Are y'all hearing me? Uh, uh, whenever the Lord speak to me, whenever the Lord speak to me, uh, uh, I was on the Kenneth Copeland one time. And uh, the Lord said to me, he said, uh, you know, Kenneth Copeland, I like Kenneth Copeland. He gives you a lot of faith, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, and I, he, he's not very excited, but he gives you a lot of faith. <laughs> I got three preachers on TV who, they don't make you shout, they don't make you bug, but they're real good. Uh, I like, uh, 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 what's his name? Oh, Andrew Womack. Yeah. He's born, but he's good. <laughs> Kenneth Copeland and Charles Stanley. Yeah. Good, right? But anyway, so I was watching on TV. But Kenneth Copeland said years ago, he needed years ago. You know this a long time ago because he, he got a lot of money now. But years ago, he said he needed fifty thousand dollars. And he said to the Lord, Lord, I don't know how I'm gonna get this money. And the Lord said to him, You do know how you're gonna get it. He said, Hi, Lord. The Lord said, Give. And woke up everybody to sleep. He said, Give. <laughs> he said, Okay. So I got ready to go get go to the bathroom, get a shower, and I heard a voice say, Give! I left out the bathroom to see if the TV was on repeat or something. You understand? <laughs> but it wasn't. I heard it again. Give! I said, Give what? I had a car that I really, really liked. And the Holy Ghost said, Give that car. So I started saying, Maybe that's a lying spirit talking to me. <laughs> I said, Lord, if that's you, you know, you don't want to do something, you start saying, Lord, if it's you, let a cow walk in my front yard. <laughs> when I look at him, let him say, boo. <laughs> I said, I know that's you. I, I know that I have a shout out to God. But when God wants you to do something, he don't let you rest till you obey what he to you. I obey God. I called the preacher. I said, who to give it to? He told me to give it to. I called the preacher. I said, preacher, the Lord just called and told me to give you this cup. He started crying. I said, I'm crying too. Praise God. <laughs> We're crying together. Praise the Lord. But I let it go. But the reason I was able to let it go is because I recognize everything I have belongs to him. And the reason... You hold on to your money, it's because you think it's yours. When you get the revelation that everything you got belongs to God, you'll let it go. Slap somebody and say, I belong to God. <laughs> now go to Proverbs chapter 13 real quick. Give me two more minutes and I'll be done with this. Proverbs chapter 13, 13, Proverbs. When you have it, say, I got it. I got it. You don't have it, say, wait on me. Hurry up. Proverbs 13, verse 22. It says that a good man Amen. leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. Do you know that the Lord wants you to be so blessed that your grandchildren can live off of your blessing? Do you believe that? God wants you so blessed that your grandchildren can live off of what you have. He said, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. I read that scripture one day, and the Holy Ghost said to me, he said, son, if a good man will leave an inheritance to his children's children, he said, how much more would a good God leave his sons and daughters? <laughs> then he said, the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Is that right? Now let's show us who got our money. Sinners got our money. Yeah. And if you look in the world right now, sinners got a whole lot of money. But tell somebody, say, God's getting ready to switch hands. 
I felt that in the Holy Ghost. Raise your right hand. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All right, I need you to say this with power. You're making a declaration. Let me tell you something. See, some of you are very weak in the spirit, and you don't have no power, and you, 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 your prayers don't do nothing, because you don't understand that when, when you see Africans, you know, he from God. When you see Africans pray real loud and that real crazy, it's because your speed is determined by what's chasing you. What do you mean? If a snail is behind you, you'll take your time and walk. But let a lion come behind you. You'll run. I know a lady at my church years ago. She always had a cane, like she couldn't walk. One day a dog started chasing her, and supernaturally she got healed right there. Your speed is determined by what's chasing you. And some of you don't pray fervently because you ain't going through nothing. But the minute your situation gets intense, you will pray on a different level. How many people in here need God to turn some things around for you now? Yeah. Hello. I said, who needs God to turn some things around now? Yeah. Not tomorrow, right now. Yeah. Raise your right hands. Say, in the name of Jesus. All of my increase, all of my finances that are in the wrong hands, in the name of Jesus, I don't hear you. In the name of Jesus, I command my increase to switch hands, switch hands, switch hands now in Jesus' name. I believe that everything that you're supposed to have. You gonna get it. You gonna get it. You gonna get it. And I'm decreeing God gonna blow your mind before the year is out. Come on, come on, come on. If you believe it, just jump up real quick. Shout glory. You see? Come on, come on. You 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 have to believe that when you say things, you shall have whatever you say. You believe that? Hello. You believe that? Lift those hands all over this room for the next 30 seconds. Pray loud in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Pray loud in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Pray loud. Pray loud. Pray loud in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Pray loud in the Holy Ghost. I need you to command the increase. Command liberty. Your increase has been on hold. But command an increase. Command liberty. Come on. Come on. Come on. He's your provider. 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 Come on. Pray, 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 pray. I feel something releasing. I feel something releasing. But your struggle is over. Your heartache is over. Your pain is over. God's getting ready. Wow. 
three rows together. I mean, huge. Psalm the same scripture when they talk about the finger of God. God's finger, I mean, angel, been huge. I've seen angels that were pretty. I've seen angels that weren't so pretty. You know, when you look at those angels over there in Ezekiel, one got a head on them and a wing and a bird. You know, they ain't no pretty creature. But I've seen all kinds. But I had one visitation, one encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ where he appeared to me. Now remember, no man has seen God at any time. If somebody ever told you they seen God, they lie. No man can see me and me. But Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. So the only God you will ever see is through Jesus. He's the express image of the Father. If you say you've seen God, that means you've seen Jesus. Because if you want to know what God looks like, look at Jesus. Oh, God. Hallelujah. If you want to know how God acts, look at Jesus. Because he is the embodiment of God. If you don't know how God would handle the situation, look at Jesus. When I saw Jesus, he appeared to me. I had been on the fast. And, then, and on that fast, the Lord appeared to me, Jesus. And I began to ask you, what color was it? I can't explain that. You know, Paul said, Paul said, whatever he saw was unlawful to utter. So that, which really means that whatever he saw, there's no English word to describe what he looks like. So when people say they see Jesus, they can describe him, they have a fairy tale. They didn't really see it. But what's in heaven is so heavenly you can't explain it. But when he looked at him, his, I, I can tell you, when you look at him, he's so pure. And when he looks at you, it's like he's looking through you. But I had one visitation, but I can't tell you this. I can't tell you this too. Jesus got muscles. You know, like the bodybuilders. Jesus got muscles. I mean, he's a handsome he muscles. I asked one time, I said, Lord, what were the muscles? He said the muscles are symbolic of the command, the way of his glory. Jesus. That's why when the power of God really comes on you, you can't get right back up. You have to, you have to sit there a while. Anybody ever, anybody, ever, anybody ever had God just sit on you? You could get up. That was the muscle on you. Praise God. I had one visitation. That visitation, the Lord said to me, He, he rebuked me. I'm a Pentecostal boy, I'm a church boy. So I never thought Jesus talked about money because at the Pentecostal church, it made you feel bad when you talk about money. It was just love God, love God, love God, don't worry about money. But I see a lot of people love God, love God, and they die broke. Yeah. Somebody said, well, if you pray, you have money. Well, that means Bill Gates is the most powerful prayer in the world. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's not about prayer, it's about principle. I can show you some of the most broke intercessors you ever meet in your life. They can pray him down, but can't pay their bills. Tell somebody God's getting ready to turn man. I had one visitation. In that visitation, the Lord appeared to me and said, Son, this day, I give you power to speak millionaire status over the saints.
came out that vision. I said, Mom, the Lord just told me whatever you speak, we're going to back it up. So I said, Mom, I'm going to speak something over you. Let me try it on you first. Let's see the rules. I said, Mom, what she was going through at her job, they were giving her hell and high water for the year. I said, Mama, I declare your job is going to pay you to me. She started shouting, falling out. How many of y'all want your job to pay you to leave? Praise God. And then about six months, about six months, the job, she went into work one day and the boss called in office and said, we need to see you. She said, okay. She thought she was in trouble. They said, well, we're going to give you a package. We need you to leave. We're going to pay you a big check now to leave. And we're going to take care of you for the next two years. But you don't have to come to work. And they said, now, which one do you want to stay or do you want to take it? She said, I'll take it. Praise God. That was in 2006. She ain't worked ever since. Praise God. I said, praise God. A woman came to me and told me that she had <coughs> done something negligently and was facing a court case about to go to jail. And I asked her a question. I said, no, sincere. Promise me that it was negligence. It was, it was nothing you meant to do. She said, yeah. Even though God told me that he speak, whatever I speak, I can't I don't take that for granted. You never misuse power. Amen. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness is power under control. Yes, yes. I said, yes. all right, Lord. I said, she was facing, get ready to go to jail. Get ready to go to jail for good. Uh, a good 15 years. I said, you didn't mean to do it? She said, no. Thank the Lord, and I looked at her and I said, You bring me the five hundred a thousand. I'm not sure what, what, what I had said. But I said, You bring this seed, and you will only have to do one hour of community service. I said that in Mobile, Alabama. Now you gotta understand, when you give a word like that, it got to come to pass. Because if it don't, ain't nobody gonna come after his and they'll shoot at the seed. She brought that seed. She had to go to court on that Friday. Came to church that Monday. This car lined all the way down the street. Everybody wanted to know what happened. I get it now. I see people doing their arm like that. I don't know if they're protesting for me to leave the city or what. When I get it now, I see her running around, jumping, shouting, screaming. I said, what you jumping and shouting for? She said, I went to court today. And I got sentenced to one hour. Of community service. I was in Saginaw, Michigan. A young man came to me facing 20 years. He said, Brother, I don't want to go to jail. I said, I don't blame you. I said, give me a hundred dollars right now. He gave it to me. In the middle of him, me telling him to give him $100. The Holy Ghost say, give him the $100 back. He gave me $100 and God was testing his obedience. He gave me the $100. So as I did it, I gave it right back to him. I said, go to court tomorrow. All of you well. He went to court facing 20 years. The judge said, all charges are dropped. We're just going to find you $100. Hey. Oh. Every eye closed right now. If I see how long I'm going to count for it. I'm going to say something. I feel, I, I, I feel a strong prophetic in the moment, and I didn't plan on going this way tonight, neither. But uh, right over here in the overflow, that's overflow, right? Overflow. You got on black, you got on glasses, you're looking right at me. Stand up for me. Come here. 
give you a seed and a sign. Give you a seed and a sign. Give you a seed and a sign.
heard you said what you told me to say and I decree miracles I decree miracles Moshe, come on close those eyes lift those hands I decree miracles I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this rut. I'm coming out of this hole. I'm coming out of this place I've been in. This is my hour. You're going to bring your seat. Lift those hands. Father, give them all the sword that thousand, ten thousand, whatever it is, a hundred. I decree tonight that if I be a man of God, they shall see a return. Not many days hence. And when it comes, let it be good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Yes, Lord. I thank you for the increase. I thank you for the increase. Come on. I thank you for the increase. In Jesus' name. Who believes it's coming back to you? I said, who believes it's coming back to you? The blessing of God is getting ready to run me down. Tell somebody else, the blessing of God is getting ready to run me down. Now bring your seed, lay it at the altar, and say, it is so. Come on, come on. Hey. Bring your seed, lay it at the altar, and declare it is so in the name of Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah.
him and depart in his place. See his glory. Jesus, get up there. Are y'all hearing me? 
North Carolina, a man completely black, laid hands on him. Didn't happen the first time. God said, keep praying for him. And right there in the service, it's on this day, but it's on YouTube. Right there in the service, his eyes start forming. You can see that on YouTube. Yes. Eyes start forming. Yes. And God gave him a miracle. Now he can see. Praise oh, God. Amen. You believe God tonight. Snap them out and say, step in the river. Come on, wrong neighbor. Tell them, step in the river. You determine how long it's going to take. And when we get ready to worship, if you'll worship them and go right in and put your faith out there, but get your sickness. I know you're sick, but magnify him. He's bigger than your sickness. He's bigger than your cancer, bigger than your disease, bigger than that show. Come on, talk to me. He's bigger than anything you're going through. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And then us, it's on his face. Now the woman with the issue of blood, she had faith. After a while, you can be sick for so long that you no longer expect to be healed. One woman went to Catherine Coogan's meeting 13 times before she ever got a miracle. But she kept going because she was like the woman with the issue of blood who said, if I could just touch the hem of his daughter, I'll be made whole. You that are deaf, God's going to give you your hearing back. Cataracts are going to be removed. I'm telling you, the power of God's going to flow in here. But you got to say it again. Say, jump in the river. Jump in the river. I feel faith in the room. I say jump up. Jump up. Don't think about it. Praise God. Because your blessing is in your opinion. Is that right? Let's shut your hands on this woman. Look at your hands. I've seen your prayer, Teresa. The Lord called you Teresa when I walked up to you. I've seen your prayer. I've heard your dedication and your faithfulness toward me. Because you have loved me with an everlasting love and have not walked away from me like others due to your circumstances, now I shall pull you out of the low place and bring you into a steady place. And I will cause you to ride high above the mountains, saith the Lord, and even high above the nation. And things that were rightfully yours that were taken from you, I will cause it to come into your hands. This day I declare, because you honored God, the struggle is over. Hey! Hey, pick her up. I'm not done. Lift your hand. Not only that, the attacks that fight your mind. God, I want you to torment you in your sleep. Tonight, that is complete. Tonight, is dismantled. The favor of God shall be your portion. Shut your hands away. Be still and know that I am God, Teresa. Either the Lord is touching you in the lower part of your stomach and giving you a miracle. A digestive condition that has bonded you for years. After tonight, you will have no more. The Lord said, tell Teresa Becker, she's healed. Yay! Yay! Shahay! Come here. Lift your hand. Praise God. You can get rid of them bunions too. Praise God. 
You believe that? I, I was in a service, and there was a man in the service who had was white. He didn't want white hair. He said he wanted hair to be black. He was old. You know, when you get old, you have to be white. He told God he wanted hair to be black. We got into the glory. This wasn't my service. Somebody else said, We got into the glory. The presence of God came in there. The anointing came. The man had to be a bit of 77 years old. He said, Walk in the glory. The man started running, running to the front, walking in the glory. And by the time he got to the front, his hair turned from white to black. I saw that with my own eyes. So if you want your hair color to turn tonight, God will do that too. Praise God. I'm believing God tonight for supernatural weight loss. If you want weight loss, God's going to give that to you tonight too. Come on. Come on, y'all. I told somebody, you know, you go to some services where they have gold feelings coming to your teeth. I said, you don't need gold feelings. Some of y'all got bad teeth. You need a brand new set of teeth. Praise God. Amen. You ain't got no teeth. God going to make your teeth grow back tonight. Come on. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask for. I don't want you to live it, God. He's able to do it. I've seen a miracle. I've seen a man. I saw this a moment out. A man came in a service with a tumor on the side of his feet, by the side of the candle, and the Holy Ghost said, punch it. It didn't burst. It disappeared. Right there in front of people's eyes. When you see the power of God, can't nobody tell you that God is not real. Hallelujah. So tonight, you can receive your miracle. Whatever it is, be not weary and well doing for and do see the church hands of this woman. That's your word, ma'am. Be not weary and well doing. For in due season you will reap if you faint not. For I declare unto you, just like I heard Pam, I declare unto you that this is the season of unprecedented miracles. God says, I'm opening doors that will shut in your face. You will begin to see my hand move and touch you, even in thy body. For the Lord says that I'm calling you back to a place of dedication and prayer. That you walked in years ago, but you would wake up early and seek him. God said, Pamela, I'm calling you back to that place of consecration. And as you come toward me and visit me and come into the secret place, that God said, I will hide you from the places where the enemy has fought thee and attacked thee. And even God said, because of your prayers, I'm bringing deliverance not just to you, but the whole Mullen, Mullen, Mullen's family shall receive deliverance. And you will see my hand move. But this is your hour. I need you to shout. Don't you look? Yes, Somebody needs to take off running. Somebody run. 
ma'am, ma'am. Come in. Come in. How you doing? You all right? How you here? Can you sit down? Who told you about the service? You go here. You a good member? Try to be. Lift your hand. If you shout, God said, every family member in your family bound by an addiction, God said, tell Cindy, if she shout, I'll set them free. Shout.
you come here for right now, I command you to be healed. I curse that sickness. I curse that infirmity. Get out of that wheelchair. Throw that pain down and begin to walk. Begin to walk. Begin to move. Begin to do what you could not do. The power of God is flowing in here. There's a mighty anointing. There's a mighty anointing. There's a mighty anointing. It's moving in here. The glory of God is falling in this room. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Hey. Hey. My God. The power of God is falling in here. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is moving. Get your miracle. Get your miracle. Receive your miracle. Oh. Receive 
anointing. Receive that anointing. Somebody get healed. Heal a big heal. Come on, son.
want you to just receive this anointing. Because this anointing is going home with you. To your children. Your communities. Your family.
up, brother, please. And the Lord said, your tradition have come up before me as a stitch in my natural day. I'm tired of it. I hate it, say the Lord. The demons of competition and religion that have tormented this region and hindered my people from coming together. It has come up as a stitch in my natural. But I declare unto thee that as the rocks fall from the mountain, so shall my glory fall upon this land. To a people who are hungry, you better But even though I desire to move, and even though I will move, I'm looking for a people who will set up to me. I'm looking for someone who's not concerned about being friends with their family. I'm looking for somebody who will dedicate themselves to me and will give themselves to me. And I declare them to be that even in this hour, I'm bringing a shift. Even in your government, say it for the Lord. There's a shift come to those who are in authority. They are in authority, but they are against me. But I will raise up a leader after my own heart who loves me. Shout, shout. God said, even as I ship the government, I will ship the economy. And I said, I will raise up an army. I will raise up those who have been looked over. And those who have been pushed back. And those who have been cast aside. And God said, your children shall prophesy. And I will raise up their time for this. Out of this city. And I will raise up global shakers. World shakers. Planet shakers. I will raise up your daughters. To raise up the dead. And to heal sicknesses, to open blinded eyes, to open deaf ears. Ah, we are sending the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And I was, and I was sending a fear here, and a reverence here, and men will weep at my presence again. And men will say, what must I do to be saved? And men will come here, and they will not be room enough in my house. These walls will be too small for my harvest. even pastors after my own heart. If you believe that, shout! Lift your hand and yea, yea, I say unto thee, it is not by accident that ye have come this building to be upon a hill. And it is not by accident that I've called many churches in this city to be upon a hill. For you are that light upon the hill, and many shall come from afar, and they will look to the hill from which cometh their help, and the help will come, because I will raise up pastors who love me, and a great healing revival shall hit this region. I declare unto thee that even as I basa le brando o bafili le prosku le bekletea mashkado le panzia zita nunu. Yay! 
don't make the news. But while tornadoes are hitting others, there is a people that when the tornado sees your house, it will jump over it. When it sees your land, it won't come down your dwelling. Because you are mine, and I will protect you. I will cover you.
just enjoy. You want to hold my mic here? I enjoy it. Okay, hold my mic. You know, I'm coming home. It's okay. You can talk. You want to hold my mic? Yeah. Hey! Peace is coming to your house. Jesus, 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 Jesus,